Well, in case you think Cooper Road Mini is all Morris Miners, we're not. Hi there. Mark 1, 1960. I wanted to show a cool trick I'm coming up with as we speak. Have you ever tried installing one of these uh, outside door handles? The ones that used to take the, uh, the odd-shaped spacer? The angled distance piece, as they would say. Have you ever tried to start the screw back here with this arm in place and the handle installed and the latch here? Yeah, uh-huh. Impossible, I dare you. <laughs> so here's the trick. This is my old latch. This is actually for the right side door, meaning the handle turns the wrong way. So if you got a mini where your door handle lifts up, it's because someone had to use a latch on the wrong side. They're more common uh, depending on which side the steering wheel's on and which country you're in as to which ones wear out first. So a lot of folks put the right side on the left, which then forces the handle to work upward. So we've got the right one. Uh, it's sitting over there on the table, but let me show you this trick. You see this hole? Look at this. The hole for the screw. Now that happens to line up really nicely for an Allen screw. Over here, no hole. However, that's just sheet metal behind the latch. Look at the back side of the latch. See the distance here with the opening for the spring? Flip it over. Notice the extra hole I made. Notice the slightly longer Allen wrench for the 1032 screw. You force the spring out of the way. Now you got access to both of these blinking things. All right, so here we go with the real thing. So first, make sure that it's the one you're going to use because you are going to drill a hole in it. So all we're going to do is drill a hole in this outer casing and the drill bit will simply shove the spring out of the way. But, you know, you don't have to go into the spring. I'm just, I'm just saying it's not that delicate a process. The only thing you want to do here, of course, is make sure you get this distance correct. This little mod has no effect on the latch or its function. I'm going to drill a corresponding hole like I showed in the back of the door. Um, and that will make this installation possible and even relatively easy. And we'll show some action shots here. As soon as it breaks through. Now at the car, you can see the alignment between the hole I made here, the hole I'm, I've marked off here, and of course, the outer screw. Yes, I keep uh, positioning it and then uh, grabbing the camera device to show. But by backing this off enough, let's see if we can look over here, giving enough wobble here, looks like we can just manage to install this, indeed, onto the spline. So now I'm gonna be able to locate this latch, where it's gonna mount, actually put these two screws in and tighten it up and then use the screw hole here and the hole we made here with our long Allen screw to reach in to get those um, locations on the back of the escutcheon that comes in from the outside. So give me a moment here. Just like that. So the two screw locations here and there have nuts welded into the door structure. So thankfully you don't have to fiddle around back there. But they were lazy here and this one is the same tapered countersunk uh, Phillips, but there is a nut on the back of that one, but it's relatively simple to get to. Now look at what I do under here. They have these goofy, very hard to find, you know, they're like handmade by some guy in a shop, which is nothing wrong with that. I would do it. I tried, I've done it, but they're tedious to make because you have to have a collar that slips over that piece of the escutcheon that comes in. So anyway, long story short, what I found is that by putting two or three Five sixteenths split lock washers. Split locks, simple. Um, you are able to take up the space, the uneven space between the door sheet metal and the way the escutcheon that's threaded to receive what the factory used, a Phillips screw. I don't know what elf would manage to screw that in. But uh, this really does give us a straight shot. I use a countersunk screw up here uh, because that tends to self-center my 5 sixteenths washers and it'll take up the slack and the uneven tightness there. So, I have uh, 
gone ahead and tightened up this side here. You can see my stack of washers, not tight, tight, just tight enough to line everything up so that I can reach in and start the other one back there, which we can, I can barely see it, but we should be able to have a pretty straight shot at it through the access we made here. So what we have to do is just sort of, I get to use one of my favorite words, and finagle, my favorite word. You're gonna wobble that spring, find a way just to jam the Allen wrench. There. Yeah, there's a spring there, but you know, it's a spring, so you can move it out of the way. Let's see, so there's the back of the Allen wrench. Let's sneak in this way. You can see how close we are. We should be able to bring that Allen wrench right to the center line. If not, we'll have to make one of the holes bigger. So, uh, the trick is, you can see I found some split locks. I'm gonna try two of them here with my half inch. You don't have to have new ones. But, you know, don't use ones that have been flattened out or spread open. And you'll find that that thicker side there, you can wobble it around and have it face down, which is the direction that your spacer needs to be thicker. You don't have to take my word for it that I simply reach in, put this on the back of the Allen wrench that's hanging in there enough that you can manipulate it and start it in the threads. So, again, very difficult to show with the angle. Let's see if we can reach the phone in here. Let's see if you can see. The Allen wrench screw with three split locks hanging on. Okay, wobbling. Hanging on the Allen wrench just near where it has to thread. Now I simply have to put the phone down and try to thread it. So, you can watch me struggle with it here in the heat. Or you can let me try to do it and have it be done by magic. So, if I'm not mistaken, I actually got it on the first attempt here. Let me see if I can hold the door still. And you can see how, hopefully, if the camera's in far enough, how we're tightening up. We're drawing in this side of the escutcheon here. This is a chance to straighten out the rubber seal so that when you tighten it up the edges of the escutcheon fit into the recess of the seal but i'm going to go ahead and draw all of this in draw the door handle the escutcheon the seal this latch get everything positioned and then the final step is to tighten this arm up onto that square shaft in such a position that it holds the whole mechanism in they don't really there's no thread here a lot of people say, well, now you're going to put a nut there and you're going to draw that right in. No problem. So, you, know, you can move it around. If this isn't tight yet, it'll stick out a bit. But there's no thread in this. People go, well, that's how you... No, no, it's not. It's just That's just a, a split square there to get it started into its uh, drive lug. And then when you've got one side tight, you, you can see how it just pops out of the spring. And you go through the existing screw hole and bring that in as well. Right now, of course, we're tightening the escutcheon, not this. I've got these loose here to give me access through the holes. Um, and so this is going to locate and tighten this piece here specifically to the door. We could still slip this all the way out of the square shaft uh, by disengaging the lug that locks it in place using the key. The way these doors work, there's no magic in the latch to lock it. They simply... Um, the key releases a little lug that goes into a uh, internal sort of a cam arrangement there inside that discussion and, and the door the handle won't turn so that's the physical lock now don't tell anybody but you know a strong girl could probably twist that right off and open the door but no one knows that so we won't say anything the key to get this thing to feel tight remember there's no provision for tightening it here. And okay, I've got it kind of spring-loaded right now, which is kind of nice, is to force this arm right here as far back into the um, door handle part, as it were. There's a little rubber boot down here, so there's a bit of a spring load, and that's what gives it that nice feel. If you have it way out here on the shaft, um, it'll still work the same way, but that arm, that, that door handle will move in and out more. 
So I had installed the same sort of Allen screw. And these are, you know, more like a grade eight uh, for their size, certainly. And that gives us some ability to get this stuff positioned and tight. Push inward on the outer handle, push it in, and you can see what it does here. It brings the square shaft outward. I'm bringing that set screw in on this arm. Let's take a look at how it works. Yes, it's an old car. It's not going to be to it's not going to be Tesla solid. Sorry, no matter what you do, didn't start out that way. But that's remarkably nice, nicer than my '66. As a matter of fact, I believe it still sags a bit to where I was thinking of designing a little spring here to hold up the arm. I went ahead and put the screw in here, the one that has a nut on the back side of it. That hole, no big deal. If that's going to bother you, you're going to lose sleep over it, put a little rubber grommet in it or something, piece of tape, uh, a big smiley face, because it sure made installing that handle possible, <laughs> if not easy. Let's look at the uh, final installation after everything's tightened up. Really about as firm and nice a Mark I style handle you're going to get.